I'm Jerry Mitchell -like, and I'd like to share with you some techniques that I use to clean my AR style or modern sporting rifle. I shoot a lot so uh, I find myself in here doing this procedure very often and I was looking for a dirty gun and guess what there was Lena's gun she hates to clean her rifle too so I've got her competition rifle here and I'm gonna give you an idea of what I'm looking for when I do the cleaning and a very much specifics on on the actual lubrication and reassembly so all right we're gonna go ahead and take a run at it guys got a chamber flag in there this is something you always want to own and use not only do you want to own it but you want to use it so with this there's no way I can have it around in the chamber number one priority guys is to have no live ammunition anywhere on the table to tempt you to get it somewhere in the system so I've got a completely empty rifle no ammo go ahead and drop the boat I'm gonna go ahead and pull the takedown pin here Pull the bolt assembly out and the charging handle and set these on the side for right now. I've got a neat little gadget here. And this, this little piece of plastic, this little dog leg right here, you can put in the back of your receiver and affix, affix it to the pin so it, it basically breaks it open like this. So it makes it, you know, it makes it fit a cradle like this relatively easy or a vise. And you want to have a bore guide, guys. This is something you want to own is a bore guide. So I also use a stainless steel one-piece cleaning rod. Very easy to keep, to keep that rod clean. It also uh, is less abrasive should it hit the bore or anything on the receiver. So I've got my little uh, cleaning gizmo. I've got my cleaning rod. So where I'm going to start, I've got a chamber brush, guys. This is something you have to have if you have a modern sporting rifle. The chamber is paramount to keep clean. So what I'm going to do, the way I start my procedure, I usually wet different parts of the gun with different cleaning solvents and then go and then go at it. So I'm just going to start with some bore solvent. And what I want to do is wet that chamber enough to where they can start cutting carbon or whatever debris is in there. All right, I'll go ahead and work it in the chamber a little bit. One thing about an AR, the way it hit the gas system it's constantly following the platform as you shoot so it's paramount that you have to have a procedure to, to counteract that so I've got the chamber wet with bore solvent I'm gonna put my bore guide in and the idea of this guide you want to clean it from the chamber in is to protect the rifling and of course the barrel which is the most important part of the whole platform here so I've got my one piece rod got a new brush here just to impress you that I do own a new brush I'm going to dip it in there because it's new and I'm not going to contaminate it but after that I won't dip the brush into solvent because you actually contaminate it. So I'm going ahead and wet the bore with a couple of strokes here. I could have got a longer cleaning rod. I could have got next door and done this. But anyway, go ahead and stroke it a few times and let it set. That is a good brush. Go ahead. We're going to let that set for a minute. Ah. Uh, I'm gonna put my gloves on guys when I handle that boat it's pretty dirty so one thing I try to do as I get older is work a little bit smarter the least amount of this debris you can get on your hands and absorb through your skin the longer you might live so anyway <laughs> let's go ahead and put some gloves on and start taking the bolt assembly down all right so we've got the bolt assembly of course you got your charging handle got it out so the first thing I'm going to do is pull the little keeper pin here for the firing pin retaining pin. It's actually a little Carter key looking gizmo there. Go ahead and drop the firing pin out. Comes out to the rear and you can see it's pretty dirty. Lena's done a good job of uh, burning up a lot of my ammo I think. So we're going to go ahead and take the uh, cam pin out. And to take the cam pin out you have to line it up parallel with the gas key there. And you go ahead and pick it out this way. So that's your cam pin. You can pull your bolt out and of course your bolt carrier. What's interesting here is this little pin. That's something you want to keep your eyes on. Uh, you, shoot, you shoot a lot of rounds through it, it's going to bend it. So I'm constantly monitoring that pin. I'll put them in the vise and straighten them, but I've, I've only do, done that one time. And after I straighten them once, I get rid of them, especially my competition guns. And also you want to check the condition of your firing pin all the time when you, when you have a disassembly like this. And I'll show you some technique here in just a minute. Another thing you want to do is pull your extractor out. And the way I do it is I depress the rear of the extractor with my thumb and just use the firing pin 
to push the pin out to one side and then you can pull it out these gloves kind of make it a little hard so there's your pin that holds your extractor and you can take your extractor assembly out and the reason I take that extractor assembly out I want to do a visual on the spring and I also want to feel the tension of it and I want to watch the face of the extractor if it's chipped or worn and we'll, we'll do a test later with a cartridge when you reassemble it to give you an idea what it feels like if it's proper so another thing I want to look at when I'm looking at the bolt assembly you can see that the gas key is staked in these two allen these cap head screws are torqued down at the factory and they stake them uh, so I want to make sure that hasn't turned so I always do a visual on those two bolts so I've got this out got the charge handle out so what I'm gonna do start the procedure here is take this bolt assembly and wet it and let it start sitting there for a while and I did I want to get some bore solvent on it so it can sit start to dissolve some of the uh, debris there ARs pick up a lot of a lot of junk and that's just what they are they uh, that gas operation makes them very dirty you can use bore solvent like this or you can use a CLP, it depends what you have. If you had a Sonic Cleaner, that's even better, guys. I've got a Sonic Cleaner, it has spoiled me to death. Uh, works really good for the job. You can see about my fingers here, we're starting to come off of it already with the cleaner. So, uh, let that set a little bit. Let's see. Uh, Recontaminate, I don't want to contaminate all my bore solvent. Anyway, if you have a CLP product, that'll work too. Got a spray, a spray product here. I'm going to go ahead and wet it with this on the inside. Let it sit. All right. As you can see already, a lot of stuff coming off of there. This is probably just about three or four hundred rounds. My personal guns, I, I don't try to exceed about four or five hundred rounds, especially on my match guns. Uh, my rattle battle guns. What I try to do is keep a bottle of oil with me on the range and keep them wet. The idea of an AR or, or modern sporting rifle in general, they want to stay wet. So, if we, especially when we start playing with them, when we put lighter weight bolts and we have adjustable gas systems, that becomes very dependent on keeping your gun oiled, guys. So, bring a bottle of oil with you. Oil is your friend. So, all right, we got this. We got this soaking. We got the barrel wet. So, what I'm gonna do next? Give you an idea. We're gonna break it down a little bit further. Go ahead and take this upper off the lower and pull the buffer assembly out. This is something I do every every couple of thousand rounds. It depends if it's if it's been raining while I'm competing or not. So go ahead and break the, the upper off the lower. Just leave it in the cradle here. So what I like to do periodically, especially if it's been wet or I've shot a lot of ammo, is go ahead and take the buffer assembly out. It's got a little detent pin here on the back of the receiver. You can see it right here. This little tool, by the way, guys, somebody had sent me this. It's a prototype. It's probably the most strict little piece of plastic I've ever had. And I use it on the ARs constantly, so it's one of my best friends when it comes to cleaning guns. So let me go ahead and pull the buffer. You just depress it, and the buffer assembly is going to come out to the forward position like this. So you have your whole buffer spring and a weight. And uh, usually what I try to do if I've shot a lot, this, the buffer assembly is really clean on this gun, but give you an idea how to, how to maintain that. I go ahead and take the cleaning rod, and I've got a 12 gauge shotgun brush, and I just affix it to the rifle rod. And then I'll take a, a cloth. I'm sure there's better ways of doing it, but I'm cheap and I've always used this way, so. Anyway, pull a section of it off. Not, not like that, maybe a little better. <laughs> and what I do with that, of course, is just put it on the, on the end of the brush and just wrap it on there like this. And you can go ahead and uh, run it in all the way to the rear, do a few revolutions. And uh, it's not really high tech, but it's never failed me either. So as you can see, it wasn't all that dirty. But I know it's clean. And usually what I do with the trigger group, guys, I don't disassemble a trigger hardly ever unless I have a problem. So what I'm going to do is go outside with a, uh, 
with the contact cleaner or brake parts cleaner. What you want to do when you choose a product to do this, you want to make sure it doesn't harm the finish of the firearm. A lot of disc brake cleaners and stuff you buy at an automotive store, uh, it's, it's hard on the gun finish. So you want to be sure when you use a, a solvent of any kind on it that it's, it's going to be compatible with the finish of the firearm. So what I'm going to do here in just a minute is take this assembly out and blow it out with a contact cleaner to make sure that the trigger assembly is clear. And that's something I want to do when I'm in the, when I'm in the shop too is check the function of the, of, the, of the safety. You want to check everything. You want to assume everything is wrong until you certify it as being right. So after a while we're going to step out and blow that trigger assembly out. So now we've got the bolt assembly here. And usually what I do when I have that bore soaking like this, I'll take a CLP or bore solvent and spray the inside of the receiver here, inside the track. Let that sit a little bit. There's a lot of debris in there also. Uh, all that blow by that comes out of the chamber, of course, goes into the upper receiver and it really makes it tacky and dirty rel relatively quick. So we're gonna go ahead and start cleaning this receiver the upper assembly. There again, I just take a good piece of paper towel and that little plastic tool again. And what I'm trying to do is to clean that raceway that the gas key recipro reciprocates in. See the top of the bolt, the gas key runs to the top of the receiver. It's important that you keep that channel clean. I see a lot of guys riding around on their four wheelers with their, with their rifles exposed, the dust covers open and uh, you got a wet gun, guys. You got a gun with a lot of oil on it. And you get you're getting a lot of debris in there. You're just asking for accelerate accelerated wear. So I try not to uh, let that happen. As you can see, what's coming out of it already. If you got cleaning patches that size that'll work in here, you can use it. I uh, paper towel has already done done the job for me pretty good. As you can see, there's a lot of a lot of debris coming out of there already. And it doesn't seem to matter what propellant you use. I haven't seen much difference in a ball powder or an extruded powder in, in the amount of, of, of fouling. So it's kind of interesting. You'd think one of them would be better than the other, but I haven't, I haven't found that issue yet to be true. So we got it just about where we want it. All right. So that's done. So usually what I do at this stage of the game, I'll step outside and with the brake parts cleaner or that contact cleaner, I blow out the barrel extension and the barrel. That way all that unburned power and everything that's in your barrel extension right here is flushed down the bore. It's really hard to clean in there. They make a lot of gizmos and stuff to do it. I've always found it just easier to get some brake parts cleaner or contact cleaner and get it with that. So. What I'm going to do is step outside with this nozzle and blow that chamber out. Okay guys, the point of interest here is this barrel extension. You can see it's, it's, uh, it's, very, it's hard to get in there with anything to clean it properly, so I use a contact cleaner like this. I usually do this outdoors for ventilation purposes, so we're going to make this real quick so I don't get too high on this stuff. Alright, <laughs> here we go guys, we'll go ahead and blow it out. It evaporates really quick and you can see in the bucket how much debris is coming out of there. And you can go ahead, you can see the you can see the barrel extension now is really bright. So uh, we've done our job there. So we're gonna just set this on the side and grab the trigger assembly. So I'm gonna go ahead and decock it. One thing you want to remember on an AR, you never want to let the hammer slam on the receiver. So you want to you want to retain the hammer when you drop it. You get it in the open position like this, the fired position. It's the same thing here, guys. You can go ahead and uh, just flush it out. And it all depends again on how dirty it is. All right. So there it is. Look like a new one. So we're gonna let this dry. We're gonna step in and get out of here for a moment and start reassembling. We put these two assemblies outside and gave it time for that contact cleaner to flash off. So now we're back indoors with it. So what we're gonna do, 
take our bore guide again. And the whole idea about cleaning that part and blowing all that trash down the bore is so you have a spotless chamber, guys. And also that barrel extension is, is really clean. So put the bore guide back in, take our cleaning rod and put, and put the brass jag on it. From here on, I had brushed the bore three or four times. That's about all I'm going to do with it. From here on, I'm just going to use cleaning patches from here uh, to finish the cleaning. So I've got a patch. And that's what's good about this uh, bore guide. It kind of ho it holds everything in line. Oh, yeah. Not too bad. Let's do another one. Look like one more and we'll be good to go. So what's nice about that solvent, it flushes all that debris, everything out. So if I had a chrome molly barrel, of course I'd run a patch down there that was lubricated to prevent rust. But this is a stainless steel barrel, so all I'm going to do is run a few patches through it. It's going to be good to go. And from the look of the patch here, look like it might need one more. One more. If your bore would be extremely forward, you might want to do the bore solvent procedure again. This one doesn't appear to have any problems, so... I think we're ready to go right there. So we'll let it go at that. Okay, so we got that clear. Go ahead and take the uh, bore guide out. And one thing I always like to do when I finish running a patch down there is to make sure there's nothing stuck, not a thread or any kind of debris in the bore. And it looks to be just what I want, clean from, from end to end. Good deal. So we've got that. So now we're gonna pull, put our attention back to the bolt assembly here. So. Uh, let me grab a paper towel. We had a time for it to sit a little bit. Get some of that uh, carbon to loosen up on it a hair. So let's play with it and see what we can do. Go ahead and clean the charge handle. I usually put this in an ultrasonic cleaner so I'm a little bit spoiled to that. Clean the inside of the raceway where the uh, gas key reciprocates. Make sure it's all clean. Make sure your roll pins are also in place. That's something else you want to keep an eye on. These little roll pins on the, on the handles themselves are very fragile, so uh, you want to keep a, a good eye on where they are in, in relationship to the handle. So these are flush, so we're good to go there. I've got a little tool here that you can go inside of the boat, uh, inside of the carrier, if you needed to uh, check if you have a lot of carbon in it. And you can stick it in from the front and rotate it. And this one had a little bit of debris in it. What this does, it goes to the back of the boat and picks up any any carbon in the back. You can see they had a little bit, good bit of stuff in there. So uh, that cleaned the bolt all the way to the end. You can actually feel it. Now it's clean. So there you have it guys. You can see by the uh, amount of junk coming out of there. That's some kind of a big, big piece. There you go. Got that clean. We had that CLP on it, so we'll go ahead and wipe it real good. What I'm looking to do here is to uh, remove as much, of course, of, of uh, that fouling as I can. But I want to make sure that the track here where the cam pin runs is also clean. That's uh, a high load area. That's the most stressed area of, of the whole carrier assembly. So what I'm going to do is just take this paper towel and uh, roll it up a little bit. And run it in the boat as far as I can. Get it to the back of the boat, see what we can find in there. Might have uh, see what we come out with. Yeah, it's pretty trashed out. You can see it picked up a lot. Okay, making sure everything is in its, in its right spot. You can also uh, take your little doodad tool here, catch the back of the uh, the carrier on the inside. This catches a lot of debris also from uh, from the blow by from the bolt to the carrier. It's kind of interesting how this bolt assembly is made. So, uh, all right, that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. So we got the bolt itself right here. Uh, most important part on this, of course, would be your gas rings. 
So we'll take a look at those in just a minute. That's where that sonic cleaner comes in, comes in handy here. Also, what you can do, if you wanted to use some of that contact cleaner, you can go out and blow it, and you get this thing spotless clean. So what I'm looking to do is get much of that debris out of the channel here. Also, where the, where the firing pin travels, go ahead and get this firing pin clean. You can see it had a lot of carbon on it. All right, looks pretty good. What I'm looking for on this firing pin, you got a little bit of debris on it. If you want to get it spotless, you can brush it out. That took it all off. So it's clean from stem to stern. You can see the head of the firing pin itself here, guys, actually starting to brad out a little bit. So it's been shot. This probably has about 6,000 rounds through it from the look of the firing pin. I'm also wanting to look at the end of the firing pin to see if it's not chipped or worn. So another way of checking your firing pin uh, protrusion when you get your bolt cleaned up. Another trick I've found through the years is to uh, take, a, take a fired case like this, guys. You get you an old fired case, and on the back side of the bolt here, where the carbon builds up, you can actually use this as a scraper. And if you want to get it truly spotless, you can scrape most of that debris off. And that's where a good solvent comes in. It loosens it up. You can see it actually starting to chip out of there in pretty good sized pieces. So you can brush that with that piece of brass and it burnishes it right off without any damage to the bolt. This really gets beat up really quick. Uh, it, it would have to take an extreme amount of uh, fouling for it to hurt the cycle of the gun. But if you keep it clean and you uh, use the right solvent, the next time you go to clean it, it makes it a whole lot easier. So, got a stainless steel brush, and you can see it brightened it up pretty good with just that little bit of effort. So, the solvent did a good job. This bolt is actually discolored somewhat. Okay, I usually take a Q-tip, see if this one will fit. Some of them do and some don't. You can run a Q-tip in here all the way down into the end. And uh, get most of that debris out of there. That's where that parts cleaner come in again if you want to step outside and get it totally spotless. but. This seems to be acceptable. Another thing you want to look at, guys, is your gas rings when you go to reassemble. You want to make sure no split lines up with the other. So you want to separate them. I usually do a 180 degree on them, so there's three of them. So that's all clean. Came out pretty nice. You can see by the paper towel here, it's quite a, quite a bit of junk came out of there. Your cam pin. Want to make sure that's clean and we want to check it for wear if it's got any sharp edges on it from where it's riding on the bolt itself. You can see the uh, you can see the abuse it takes right here. It takes a lot of load to, un to unlock that bolt and especially when you when you start monkeying with the gas system and you pick the bolt velocity up, how fast this bolt opens, uh, sometimes we, we, we increase the uh, cycle time 30-40% so it's really hard on that cam pin. So you want to keep an eye on that. Your extractor. What you're looking for in your extractor, guys, you want to keep the extractor lip itself clean. I've actually had a pin break on an extractor one time. I've had one extractor break. This is a single spring with a little piece of hard plastic in the middle. They make several up upgrades for this, but I've never really had any trouble with the standard one at all. I'm just looking at it to make sure that I don't see a crack anywhere on the side here. But you have to remember this is a push feed rifle which means that extractor has to pop over that rim on every shot you fire. So the extractor takes a huge beating. That bolt goes forward, hits the cartridge and the extractor has to jump over it, grab it, pull it out and do the same thing over and over. So this pin, this extractor pin itself takes a tremendous pounding. So I've actually seen one of these break. And of course your little cotter pin or your firing pin retaining pin is another 
they make this one both in a solid and the original split type so the standard part is not bad you just have to keep an eye on it so these are all your parts for your bolt assembly let me go ahead and get them off the tile here where you can see them and what they look like and we'll go over them one, one more time and a little cleaning tool should you, should you need one so that's your bolt assembly the bolt and the carrier and this is the buffer assembly what I'm looking for on here of course this is relatively clean so I'm just going to wipe it there again if you had a sonic cleaner the best way to do it would be just dumping a sonic cleaner pretty good good to go all right so we got all the assemblies here so I'll go ahead and start to reassemble the bolt another thing you can do while you have your firing pin out you can also check for how much firing pin protrusion you have as you can see here on the face of the bolt you see how much protrusion you have what I'm looking for in my firing pin to see if it's not battered on the back or on this front stop right here you can see the stop starting to take a little bit of a peen uh, so it's not in bad shape it's got a lot of hours on it but it's got some life left in it so we're gonna run it again all right so the way I put my extractor back in you can go ahead and lay it in the track and with your thumb depress the back of the extractor go ahead and put the retaining pin in and if you have an enhanced bolt it's even harder to get in so there it is extractors in you want to look at the face of your extractor right here make sure that it's not chipped on the edges and also what I do with this fired case after I do the reassembly I want to make sure that the uh, ejector plunger is loose and also the extractor tension feels right so you can take your firing pin or a punch and go ahead and take your bolt and push down on the ejector make sure that it's free and it's cycling good you can see the plunger here that's your ejector it's very critical it keeps everything running so it's clean it's functioning it's got good travel it's got spring pressure on it also your extractor you can take a fired case a fired case not a live one go ahead and put it on the extractor and try to pull it through and I'm pulling on it really hard so it's catching and from the feel of everything it's uh it's good to go I'm sure there's more technical ways of doing it but uh, it's got me through all these years so that's the system I use anyway there it is it's all clean and I'm, a, I'm gonna go through a, an oiling procedure that I do on my boat and I'll give you an idea of why I do it that cam pin guys takes a hell of a beating so that's that's the main load area on your whole bolt carrier what's interesting about the cam pin you notice you can only put it in one way into the bolt itself and the reason for that is so you don't assemble your bolt backwards where you can't eject the case out so usually this bolt this bolt has a shoulder in the back where the cam pin only go in one way the military ones have a stake where they just hit it with a punch so you can't assemble the, the gun backwards so pretty trick so we've got the bolt here give you an idea what I do when I reassemble I go ahead and wet the back of the, the bolt itself right back here this extension and I do the rings too and this collar which is actually the cam uh, track I guess you could say that it that rotates in the, in, in the carrier assembly itself put it in the carrier you always want your extractor to the right side and you can see the cam pin hole is lining up so when you put your cam pin in you have to put it in long ways and then you turn it you can use your firing pin to do that you turn it across and now when you drop your firing pin in like this you can put your retaining pin in from the right and you're good to go what you want to make sure guys is to make sure your firing pin is retained before you assemble because <laughs> you can actually put that retainer on the wrong side of the firing pin and then when you go to cycle the platform your firing pin will fall out into the gun and then you've got a really nasty jam I did that one time so I'll give you a heads up on it you always want to make sure that your firing pin is retained before you start reassembling so we have it in there it's retained 
and we're good to go. So we got lucky, got it right on the first time. Okay, what I like to do on the cam pin is to use grease on it. So I've got some grease, and what I want to do is load the cam surfaces that have the torque, front and back, put a little grease on it. This really seems to uh, lessen, lessen the wear characteristic on that cam. So got grease front and back. Yep. Mm. Such a good grease it got away from me. All right, got that done. So we've got the bolt and the carrier lube from the inside. So that's there. So I'm gonna take my trigger group next. And on this trigger assembly, it's got a couple of pivot points I wanna cover with. Take the standard gun oil here and run it on the, on the wear points. I'm gonna put a little bit down on the sear surface. Also the pivot area here. And what I like to do on the safety, I use a little bit of lighter oil since we flushed it out and go ahead and put a drop under the, under the uh, safety lever here so it'll, it'll get under the, uh, the plunger assembly and also on the outside here on that wear surface. This light oil will wick in there really good. So what I usually do after I assemble is go ahead and wipe the excess off the outside. So we've got it all oiled up. Check it. Good to go. Okay, so we've got that. We've got the bolt together. Uh, on your buffer assembly, you can run a little light grease on it. I usually just oil mine. Uh, there again, I just uh, put a few drops. Like that. Go ahead and drop it back in the buttstock, and it's ready to go. All right, let's go ahead and do the upper assembly here. I'm going to take your charge handle, put it in the track the correct way. Lock it in, start the, uh, start the charge handle in, in just a little ways. And what I like to do, I like to, to oil the upper assembly after it's actually in there. So I'm going to go ahead and put the bolt in, address it forward. We've got that. Let me wipe my hands off a little bit better here. Let me find a clean paper towel. Go ahead and get my hands clean. Take the upper, being careful not to hold it back so the bolt doesn't slide to the rear. Take the lower, start your front pin in. And hook it, pivot it over, put the rear pin in, work it to the rear. And usually what I do from here, I address the, the raceways with the oil from the outside. That way it doesn't get wiped off on the back of the receiver when you assemble. Put about two or three drops on each on each side. And cycle it a few times. Let's see, finish wiping it down. Looking pretty good, guys. Looking pretty good. All right. So, there we have it, guys. A clean rifle is a happy rifle. Ready to go on the range, guys. There it is. Nothing to it. A few minutes, right products, you got it made.